To replace the e-brake cable on the rear driver's side, I'm going to remove the wheel first with a 19 millimeter socket. I'm going to remove the spring for the adjuster first. Now I'm going to push this adjuster forward and pop it out of here, remove it with the spring. Now grab onto the spring really tight with some locking pliers. Unhook that. Now I'm going to grab the outer cup for this locking pin. I'm going to grab it with some locking pliers, just gently press it in, hold the pin from the back side, rotate this cup to unlock the spring, and remove your pin so you don't drop it and lose it. Move this out of the way, and now you can take this shoe, move it to the side, or pull it out. Now if you twist it, we have access to this parking brake cable here. You can unhook this uh, spring, and now we can unhook the parking brake cable from this shoe. Just like that. You want to just slide it out. Perfect. Now you want to take these ears and either use the tool that squeezes them in or you can just break them off because obviously we're replacing this. I'm using a pick. There should be three of them. One on the top, one down here, and one somewhere on the back side which is hard to see. Perfect. I just got them all. Now you can pull the parking brake cable through. If you follow the parking brake cable, you'll see a similar setup here. So I'm just going to go ahead and break all of these. My cable is completely seized, so I can't pull it through to disconnect it here. So I, I, have, to, I have to uh, break it off here and remove it in order to do anything else. Looks like we have a little um, plastic retainer here. Disconnect that, twist this cable, break the last ear on this retainer. Now remove the cable from its retainer over here. Perfect. Remove it from the bracket and out comes your driver's side parking brake cable. Let's install the new one. Now take your new one, slide it in through the bracket here and you can lock it in. Perfect. Pull on the cable slide it into its retainer over here. There we go. All right, and while I'm here, I'm just gonna lock these two together like they were. Now you wanna take the cable, stick it through the back side of this backing plate, and press it till it locks on. Now let's lock this in uh, to its bracket and make sure that it's going the right way. So I like to hold the shoe kind of in position. That way I figure out in which direction this arm has to go in. So it actually has to go in this way. And this is going to be a little bit challenging just because you have to pull on this. So I'm going to lock some locking pliers onto the end. Lock them in tight. And if you just pull a little bit, you don't need a lot of space, just pull a little bit. Just enough to slide this fork retainer in. There you go, that's attached. Now let's reinstall this shoe. I'm going to put back any hardware that has come off while I was doing this job. Reinstall the spring at the top with this retainer that holds that wire for the adjuster. Bring this whole assembly up and I know the adjuster isn't in yet at the bottom. I'm actually going to wait to do that after this shoe is not flopping around anymore. I want to fully attach it first. To do that, I'm going to take a screwdriver and just guide this spring up and over. Make sure it's set down where it needs to be. Bring this cable up and over. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and put in the adjuster. To do that, make sure that the threads are facing towards the shoe that does not have the parking brake. And I'm going to back it off or retract it all the way. That'll be easier to put on than I can expand it back and adjust it. There we go. Just like that. Now let's lock in this shoe. Put the pin in from the back side. Line it up with the hole in the shoe. 
grab your spring and the little cap, and I have locking pliers already locked onto it. Push the pin through. Once it lines up with the hole, once the cap lines up with the hole on the pin, twist it 90 degrees. That will lock it in and release whatever tool you were using to put this on. One last thing left to do is to install the spring and the adjuster. To put this on, slide the adjuster on that pin with the larger hole, and then once it's on, push it back, and that locks it in. And now I just have to hook on this spring here. Remember, it went from behind. Pulling down with a pick on the spring, come from behind and hook it on. All right. Now let's adjust the adjuster to where it was before. I remember I had about five or six threads sticking out on this side, so that's where I'm going to go. Then, then once the drum goes on, I'll do the final adjustment. All right, let's test the drum on. Grab the drum, and I think I expanded the shoes a little too much. Oh, maybe not. Oh, actually not enough. What you're looking for on drum brakes is constant uh, friction. Not a lot, but just a little bit. You want them to just barely touch. These are not touching at all, so have to go a little bit more. Now you can do this with the drum on, but it's easier to just do it this way for me. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, see that's a little bit too much. <laughs> to back it off, pull back on this retainer, turn it the opposite way. All right, let's see what that does. A lot of times this is a trial and error process. Oh. Okay, so you can hear that now. So you can hear them scraping. That's exactly what you want. I might go like one more notch. I'm gonna expand the shoes one more notch here. Oh, other way. Okay. And then I think I'm just gonna leave them exactly like that. drum still slides on no problem. I have minimal friction. Perfect. Now let's get the wheel on. Reinstall all five of your lug nuts, snug them up, and torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Now test out your parking brake. 